welcome to the Eugene Torto YouTube channel. I want to thank everyone who's subscribed so far, and if this is your first time here or you've been watching my videos, go down there and subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit like, hit thumbs up, thumbs down, leave comments. So everything that you do there will help my channel grow, and who knows, maybe one day I'll get monetized, which will help pay for things like this PCB valve. And uh, if you didn't see it in my last video, I gave a short overview. I'll give a link up there about the uh, PCV valve and why I'm installing it. And uh, if you're not familiar with the L98, it came in uh, Corvettes and other vehicles. I believe the uh, Firebird and Camaros. And as far as I know, that was the only GM vehicles that used it. The L98 was from like 85 to uh, 91 on the Corvettes. I'm not sure what other years they used them in other cars, but they basically all use the same PVC system. Normally they have a PVC valve here where this one's located, and it just went straight there to the intake. And on the other side, I'll go around there real quick, and here we are. And uh, it had a hose here that drew fresh air from the throttle body. Went down that hose there in that valve cover and got circulated through the engine, through the PVC valve, and back into the intake. And that would draw fresh air and create a vacuum inside the crankcase, which helps uh, control your crankcase uh, blow-by pressure. This, not being a stock motor, is a 383. Uh, the link up there, I left it in my last video too, uh, uh, basically pumps a lot more air. So, originally I stuck a PCV valve from a big block Chevy, and uh, that worked real well, except that idle it was passing too much air. Cruising and whatnot, it, it worked great. Uh, so I went to a LT1 uh, PCV valve. When I say LT1, I mean the first LT1 that came out. I think it was in the 70s. Someone correct me if you can. Uh, that came in LT1 V8, which was a 350. That came in the Corvette. And that used a real uh, high-performance cam. So uh, they needed a lesser vacuum sig uh, less vacuum being drawn out of the system at idle in order to help it with idle. So, that worked. I tried one of them. That worked great at idle. Didn't work great when you were off idle. I was getting uh, oil buildup all around the uh, grommets and stuff and, uh, and etc. It was creating too much crankcase pressure with the 383. So, I installed this ME Wagner. I gave a review in the last video. And, uh, let's see, I still have some other stuff here. Putting their decal, which I need to... I need to uh, find a place somewhere up here to put that decal. I'm probably going to have to find somewhere else. But anyway, I installed that and uh, I've taken it out for a couple of test drives and it works really great. I'm not going to go an overview of how to install this. It takes only about 10 minutes to you know plug it in and hook up a vacuum gauge and adjust it. I'll leave a link to their video, Amy Wagner's video, up here on how to do that. And uh, I have to say, this is working really well. It, uh, it's providing a, a better vacuum signal at idle. I'm idling better. And uh, even though I only had it out a couple of times, I just came back from a road trip now, I'm not seeing oil build up around the, uh, the grommet and, or anywhere else. And, uh, and that's great. And... Uh, it seems like it's getting a little bit better a fuel miles. It just makes sense. The better vacuum signal you have, usually the better fuel miles you get. Uh, I have to say, uh, I'm so far impressed. I plan on doing a uh, further review at the end of the year. So, like I said, go down there, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. This way, when that video comes up, you'll be notified. But uh, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed. This is expensive, especially for a PCV valve, but I think it's worth it. I have to say it's actually worth it. If you uh, 
Especially if I think I never I never tried it with a carburetor, of course, because this is fuel injection. But if I had a carburetor with a lumpy cam and had a real low vacuum signal, this would definitely be the way to go. Now that's uh, if you run a PCV system. A lot of people don't. Some just run breathers on their valve covers. Other people run a vacuum pump. Uh, I'll leave a link to a homemade one I made up there. And uh, I still consider a vacuum pump because the one disadvantage to a PCV system, even though it draws fresh air and circulates it through the crankcase, by the time it gets here, this valve is hot. So is that air circulating into your intake. So you're heating your intake charge more. And if you don't run a uh, some type of uh, crankcase... Uh, air oil separator which usually the stock system doesn't have that oil's going into your intake and you know if it's real bad you're going to end up uh, building up a lot of carbon on your pistons and stuff and uh, cause pre-ignition not, not to mention with the hotter intake air so I'm still considering a vacuum pump though that would be kind of overkill for this motor and it also would negate the emission systems because even though I uh, I could register as an antique, it still has to pass visual in inspection in Pennsylvania. Even though this car is 30 years old, I actually use this car quite a bit. And I don't want to fall under the range of a classic or antique license plate registration. So I keep it registered and insured as a regular vehicle, and it does meet all emission standards as far as visual emission standards, believe it or not. Uh, and I like to keep it that way. Uh, but like I said, there are other alternatives out there if you're not required to run a PCV system. Uh, so far, I'm very impressed. Like I said, later in the year when I get a lot more miles on this, I'll give a better review. And uh, I should have more stuff coming up in the future. Uh, so uh, subscribe, please, if you could, and help this channel out. In the meantime, I want everybody to hang out and have a really good day, and God bless. Thanks for watching.